Hello, I'm Charles, and I'm a beekeeper that loves old bee equipment. Today, we're going to be looking at one of the fathers of the modern smoker, the Corneal Smoker. It had a short run, but its second version became the AI Root Smoker. I won't be restoring this smoker, but I will be rehydrating the leather to prevent dry rot. And here we have a Corneal Smoker. These were manufactured uh, in the late 1800s and early 1900s and are considered the father of what later became the AI Root Standard Smoker. The AI Root Standard Smoker is really the parent of modern smokers in a lot of ways because it has the more tapered top to it. The Corneal originally was what's called a gooseneck smoker and there were a few different brands that had this gooseneck but Corneal is the one that I think has the longer legacy because they eventually got bought out by AI Root and became uh, the Root Standard Smoker. And they are the ones that first did the more tapered top. So there are Corneal smokers out there that look very similar to the modern, uh, to the more modern AI Root Smoker that looks like modern smokers today. As you can see, it has a shield. That's pretty neat and they didn't have shields on a lot of things at the time. This kind of helped you prevent uh, burning yourself uh, if you're gripping this from, from behind. Um, on top of it, they have two screws, one and two, that attach it to the bellows. Something I think is neat for the top that's attached is that it attaches right here on the neck and it uses a cotter pin, which I think is pretty neat. Deep down side, it has a little grill. Um, let's take a look at the bellows. Now the bellows has a crescent shape that is very similar to what many Bingham smokers have, where they have this, this uh, crescent inlet where you set your fingers to get a good grip on the smoker. It has them on both sides, which I think is really neat. Um, it also has this little piece of wood, which I don't think is original, covering up an inlet. Um, I suspect that perhaps the inlet busted, and to allow the smoker to work, they had to cover it up. Um, I'm not going to go as far as repairing that, because the bellows is immaculate. We're going to soften up the leather today uh, and preserve it, but... You know, it's in really good shape, and I, I really don't want to damage it by taking it apart and doing a restoration. It's fine the way it is. Uh, a few things to note is there is a little bit of warping up top with the board for the bellows being bent, but that doesn't affect the, that doesn't at all affect the uh, functionality. Well... What we're going to do today is we're actually going to do something preservation wise and what we're going to do is preserve this leather with a little bit of mink oil. What we're going to use today is mink oil liquid. Now there are other products out there. Um, Neats for oil is another one that you can use. Uh, but we're going, to, we're going to go with mink oil and use it in more of a liquid form. We're going to try to get it on kind of as evenly as possible. Ah, well, I see one mistake. I really shouldn't use toilet paper for this as it flakes off. It'll, it'll dry and then I'll be able to brush it off, but that is not awesome at all. And you want to see where it darkens to tell that you got the oil on there. Now, can this stain the leather? It can, but the original tan is gone and for the most part, most of the tan will return anyway. But what mink oil is going to do is it's going to rehydrate the leather and also put a little bit of a protective oil on the outside of it. That way if somebody picks up this bellows and squeezes it, if the leather is not dry rotted, it'll let them give it a few squeezes. Because I like mine to still be squeezable if I can help it. All right, well, 
we have soft, and I can already feel it softer to the touch. And we'll let that saturate in there. And you know what? We may do a second uh, coat later off camera. Right now, I'm trying to look for any branding or markers on this. And I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing a stamp. I can see there's a little bit of old ancient propolis on here, which tells me that this has been used uh, for beekeeping, which is cool to see and know. Uh, they have two rivets right here that hold the shield on that are pretty cool and unique looking. I love this pin uh, because it would make this easy to take off and if you ever wanted to repair or buff this down or make it uh, look brand newish again you could. Uh, you would have to destroy these rivets though to get the shield off and, and complete it. Um, but as I said, this is one that is nearly complete. It's in great shape. And aside from the inlet probably not being functional and needing repaired, I think I would cause more damage to it repairing it and have to replace it with leather that is not the original. And since the leather's in such great shape, it, it would be terrible to take it. So this is how it's gonna stand and for all you collectors out there, once again, Cornel Smoker, and uh, thank you for watching.